Neanderthals are one of the most intriguing human species, partly because they closely resemble us and are deeply connected to our history as humans. This is why they are often called a sister species. What's most fascinating is that although they are no longer here, a small portion of their DNA lives on in most people today, indicating that they and our ancestors had offspring together. They lived a very long time ago, between 400,000 and 40,000 years ago, in parts of Europe and Asia. Most of their history took place during a very cold period called the Pleistocene, which was home to enormous animals like mammoths and woolly rhinos. For Neanderthals, surviving in such a harsh environment was a significant challenge. Neanderthals had an incredible biology that helped them endure these tough conditions. They were extremely strong physically, something that might seem almost superhuman compared to people today. At first glance, it might not be easy to notice the differences between them and us, but there were some key features. For example, they were shorter than modern humans. On average, they were about 14 centimeters shorter than the post-World War II average human height. The tallest recorded Neanderthal, known as Amud-1, stood about 1.78 meters tall. While that might not seem impressive by today's standards, for their time, their strength, and physical endurance were what truly set them apart. When we compare Neanderthals to the humans who lived in Europe around 20,000 years ago, we discover something interesting. They were of similar height, or in some cases, even a bit taller. But what really stands out isn't their height, it's their weight. Neanderthals were much more robust. On average, a male Neanderthal weighed about 83 kilograms, 183 pounds, and females weighed around 66 kilograms, 146 pounds. This means they were about 20% heavier than Homo sapiens of that time. Why were they so heavy? The answer lies in their skeleton. Neanderthal bones were incredibly dense and thick, up to twice as strong as ours in some areas. Parts like the shoulders, chest, thighs, arms, and knees were particularly robust, showing that they had highly developed muscles. This great physical strength wasn't just a characteristic, it was a necessity for survival. Neanderthals were impressive hunters. They used their power to face off against massive animals like rhinos, horses, elephants, and even woolly mammoths. Their main tools were large spears, ideal for hunting in close quarters. Undoubtedly, their strength was key to their success as hunters in a world full of challenges. Woolly mammoths, similar in size to today's African elephants, were enormous creatures covered in thick fur that protected them from the cold. Hunting them was an incredibly challenging task, but Neanderthals managed it thanks to their strength, ingenuity, and ability to adapt to extreme conditions. Although these impressive animals disappeared thousands of years ago, their closest relative, the African savanna elephant, now faces the threat of extinction, largely due to human activities. The lives of Neanderthals revolved around the constant use of large spears, which were essential for hunting such massive animals. Some scientists believe that the continual handling of these weapons was one reason why Neanderthals developed such muscular arms. These strong arms enabled them to wield their tools with incredible power. In addition to their constant physical activity, Neanderthals also seem to have naturally high levels of certain hormones, such as testosterone, which contributed to their significant muscle mass and physical endurance. To put their strength into perspective, it's estimated that a Neanderthal could carry up to 27 kilograms, 50 pounds, of meat and transport it over a distance of 48 kilometers, equivalent to walking 138 laps around a football field. Their physical strength was truly astounding and essential for surviving in such a hostile world. Neanderthals were so strong that, thanks to their broad chests, solid shoulders, and powerful arms, some scientists believe they would have been excellent fighters or weightlifters in our time. It's estimated that a Neanderthal man could have bench pressed around 200 kilograms, 440 pounds, without any training, while Neanderthal women could lift approximately 160 kilograms, 350 pounds. To put this into perspective, these numbers far exceed what is considered elite strength levels today. But their strength wasn't just impressive, it was essential for survival. Neanderthals had incredible physical endurance, 
which they needed to endure the harsh conditions of their time. Studies of their bones reveal that between 79% and 94% of them suffered severe injuries during their lifetimes, such as fractures or even amputations, yet they managed to recover. These injuries likely occurred during hunts for large animals, conflicts among themselves, or predator attacks. This level of adaptation and recovery demonstrates how incredibly resilient they were in such a dangerous environment. A surprising fact about Neanderthals is that 74% of them showed signs of having survived violent encounters with dangerous animals such as big cats, wolves, and bears. Interestingly, these attacks didn't occur because the animals were hunting them, but because the Neanderthals attacked first, prompting the animals to defend themselves. This highlights how brave and tough they were. In addition to their strength and physical endurance, Neanderthals stood out for their incredible lung capacity. Their broad chests and larger rib cages housed highly developed lungs, allowing them to breathe more air than we can. On average, their lung capacity was 20% greater than that of modern humans, with some exceptional cases far surpassing this figure. A remarkable example is Kavara II, a male Neanderthal whose lungs could hold up to 9 liters of air, 40% more than the average lung capacity of a modern man. For comparison, even the best athletes today barely reach a lung capacity of 8.5 liters. Moreover, their large nasal cavities also played a crucial role, helping to warm and humidify the cold air before it reached their lungs. This combination of expansive lungs and an adapted nose was essential for survival in the harsh conditions of the Pleistocene. Neanderthals had longer and wider nasal cavities than ours, allowing them to move air twice as quickly as a modern human. This ability to take in more oxygen was not only vital for sustaining their robust bodies, but also for surviving in the cold climates where they lived. Like many animals adapted to cold environments, Neanderthals developed a fast metabolic rate to compensate for heat loss. This also affected their diet. They needed between 4,000 to 500 and 6,700 calories per day, more than double what the average person requires today. If they were alive today, they would probably need food labeled specifically for Neanderthals due to their high caloric demands. The shape of their noses also played a crucial role. They helped warm and humidify cold, dry air before it reached their lungs, protecting them from extreme climates. Although their impressive lung capacity might lead us to think they were excellent long-distance runners, this wasn't the case. Neanderthals weren't built for endurance activities like running great distances. Instead, their bodies were optimized for bursts of strength and energy, ideal for ambush hunting and using their physical power to quickly take down large prey. Evidence of this can be found in the structure of their feet. Their toes were longer and wider than ours, giving them better ground contact and allowing them to generate more power at the start of a movement. This gave them a significant advantage in quick sprints. Additionally, their legs were shorter compared to modern humans. This is uncommon in endurance athletes, who typically have longer legs to take wider strides and cover more distance with less effort. Another important factor was the shape of their Achilles tendons, which were long and thin. This design is not efficient for storing the energy needed for long-distance running. In contrast, shorter, thicker tendons, like those of modern endurance athletes, are better suited for conserving energy during marathons or other prolonged activities. The key to their speed, however, was not just in their bones and tendons, but also in their muscle composition. Human muscles contain different types of fibers that determine whether we excel in explosive movements or endurance. Fast twitch fibers are ideal for high power, high speed activities, while slow twitch fibers are better for sustained efforts, such as running marathons. While we cannot directly analyze their muscle fibers, the structure of their bodies and their adaptations suggest that Neanderthals were clearly optimized for quick bursts of energy. This made them ideal for ambushing prey or escaping immediate dangers. Neanderthals likely had a greater proportion of fast twitch muscle fibers compared to modern humans. These fibers are ideal for explosive high speed movements, which perfectly suited their hunting style. But their physical strength wasn't their only remarkable trait. Neanderthals also had surprisingly large brains. On average, a male Neanderthal's brain volume was about 1,640 cubic centimeters, 
while females had brains around 1,460 cubic centimeters. In some cases, this means their brains were up to 30% larger than ours. However, having a larger brain doesn't necessarily mean being more intelligent. Despite this, the size of their brains indicates that Neanderthals were much more capable than previously thought. We now know they could perform highly complex tasks, such as planning hunts, making advanced tools, creating art, caring for sick members of their group, and even communicating effectively. Despite these abilities, scientists don't believe Neanderthals were more intelligent than modern humans. Instead, it seems their capabilities were specifically adapted to the unique demands of their environment and lifestyle. Neanderthals' brains were not only large, but also structurally different from ours. Their brains had a more rounded and bulging shape, which was related to the need to control their more robust bodies. Additionally, they dedicated more brain space to processing certain senses, such as smell and vision. For example, their occipital lobes, which are associated with vision, were particularly large. This suggests that Neanderthals had excellent eyesight, and some scientists believe they might have been better at seeing in the dark than we are. While no intact Neanderthal eyes have been found, the size of their eye sockets indicates that their eyes were about 15% larger than ours, giving them an advantage in low-light conditions. Their heads, with large brains, eyes, and noses, were significantly more voluminous than ours. This required strong necks to support them, further contributing to their robust appearance. Their jaws and teeth were particularly large and strong, adapted to their diet and lifestyle, completing their distinctive facial features. Initially, it was thought that the thick and wide jaws of Neanderthals, along with their robust teeth, were adaptations for an extremely powerful bite capable of breaking bones or tearing through tough, abrasive foods. However, recent research has shown that their bite strength wasn't significantly different from ours. It's estimated they could generate around 700 newtons of force, comparable to the strongest bites among modern humans. A fascinating theory suggests that their wide jaws were necessary to accommodate their large teeth, which may have functioned as a kind of third hand. According to some researchers, Neanderthals used their teeth to hold and manipulate objects, allowing their hands to remain free for other tasks simultaneously. Evidence supporting this idea comes from the wear patterns observed on their front teeth. This wear doesn't match typical chewing patterns, but instead suggests they frequently use their teeth to grip or hold objects. Neanderthals were what we call hypercarnivores, as around 70% of their daily calories came exclusively from meat. They relied heavily on hunting for survival, reflecting their impressive capabilities as hunters. However, Neanderthals disappeared about 40,000 years ago, and their extinction remains a fascinating topic for scientists. It wasn't caused by a single event, but by a combination of factors that together led to the end of this human species. One of the most significant factors was the arrival of Homo sapiens in Europe and Asia, territories where Neanderthals had lived for thousands of years. Homo sapiens, originally from Africa, began expanding into these regions, and this encounter between the two species changed history forever. Homo sapiens had several advantages that made them more adaptable. For example, their tools were more advanced and crafted with greater precision and specialization. This allowed them to hunt more efficiently and adapt better to various environments. Another major advantage was their ability to create proper clothing, as evidenced by the discovery of bone needles. This allowed them to survive in extremely cold climates, something Neanderthals could not do as effectively. The combination of these skills, along with other factors, made the difference in the struggle for survival. In addition to having advanced tools, Homo sapiens appeared to have a more organized social life. They lived in larger groups and had more effective cooperation networks. This helped them share knowledge, distribute resources, and better protect themselves from environmental dangers. During the Pleistocene, Earth's climate fluctuated between periods of intense cold, glaciations, and warmer periods, interglaciations. About 40,000 years ago, temperatures dropped sharply again, posing a significant challenge for Neanderthals, who were already accustomed to cold climates, but now faced new problems. 
The cooling reduced the availability of resources, as many of the large animals they hunted, such as mammoths and woolly rhinos, declined in number or migrated to warmer regions. Homo sapiens, on the other hand, had a more diverse diet that included plants, seafood, and smaller animals. This gave them an advantage in adaptability and survival during these climatic changes. Although Neanderthals were highly skilled hunters and toolmakers, their heavy reliance on hunting large prey made them more vulnerable when those resources became scarce. On the other hand, interactions between Neanderthals and Homo sapiens weren't always competitive. We now know that the two species interbred, leading to genetic exchange. This legacy still lives on, as many people today carry a small percentage of Neanderthal DNA. This shows that, although Neanderthals disappeared as a species, they left a lasting genetic imprint on humanity. Today, it is estimated that between 1% and 2% of the DNA in modern humans of non-African descent comes from Neanderthals. This indicates that Neanderthals didn't vanish entirely. Rather, part of them merged with Homo sapiens through hybridization. Instead of a violent extinction, it seems that some Neanderthals integrated into human communities, leaving behind a genetic legacy that lives on in us. However, even before the arrival of Homo sapiens, Neanderthal populations were already in decline. One of the main reasons was the loss of genetic diversity, a common occurrence in declining species. This made them more vulnerable to diseases, environmental changes, and other stressors, reducing their ability to adapt to new conditions. Another factor that may have contributed to their disappearance was the potential transmission of diseases. Homo sapiens originating from Africa likely brought pathogens to which Neanderthals had no immunity, potentially devastating their already small and fragmented populations. Additionally, natural catastrophic events played a significant role. One example is the eruption of the Campi Flegre supervolcano in Italy, which occurred around 39,000 years ago. This event likely caused a sudden cooling of Europe's climate, further impacting Neanderthals and accelerating their extinction. The eruption of the Campi Flegre supervolcano was a catastrophic volcanic event that released massive amounts of ash into the atmosphere. This ash blocked sunlight and caused a volcanic winter, a period of extreme cold that would have further complicated the already challenging survival of Neanderthals. Now, you might wonder, if you have Neanderthal DNA, does that mean you have super strength or a strong preference for eating meat? The truth is, no. So far, most studies have not found that Neanderthal DNA significantly impacts our physical abilities or appearance. Its effects seem to be quite subtle. However, recent research suggests that this DNA may have influenced our internal systems, such as the immune system, more than previously thought. Despite this, many studies on the subject yield conflicting results, and scientists don't fully agree on how much Neanderthal DNA affects modern humans. What is undeniable is that Neanderthals were an incredibly fascinating species, and their legacy, although small, remains a part of us. Their story connects us to a distant past filled with extraordinary challenges and adaptations. Click on the video on the screen to continue learning more with our content. See you in the next video.